The top stories tonight in Y News. Department of Health to receive all procured vaccines upon arrival in the country for 15-day inspection. Filipinos who will be vaccinated against COVID-19 would be issued a vaccine passport from the government. The Philippines has moved to temporarily ban foreign travelers from the United Arab Emirates and Hungary as it extends its travel restrictions to more than 30 countries until January 31, 2021. A local court has ordered the arrest of nine dismissed cops involved in the fatal shooting of four Army intelligence officers in Polo Sulu last year. Four cops were arrested during a raid at a clandestine Shabu Fact laboratory inside the Subic Bay Freeport. And at least 43 people are dead and hundreds were injured following a strong earthquake that shook Indonesia's Sulawesi Island overnight. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, January 15, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. UNTV aired in full both of the Senate hearings last Monday and earlier today on the National Vaccination Program as part of our public service advocacy, being the nation's public service channel. Here are the highlights in today's top stories. Days after President Duterte said that the government won't meddle with the plans of local government units for COVID-19 vaccine purchase, officials from the National Action Plan Against COVID-19 underscored the role of tripartite agreements with the government in giving way for the LGUs and the private sector. In the resumption of the Senate Committee of the Whole hearing today, Presidential Advisor for Entrepreneurship Joey Concepcion explains that pharmaceutical companies, particularly AstraZeneca, prefer to sell the vaccines to national governments due to its zero-profit program. Since all countries, all governments of every country purchase the vaccines, so AstraZeneca will never sell those vaccines directly to the private sector if we insisted they would have aborted the plan so it was a great effort no, on the part of uh, the national government to be more inclusive and in allowing the private sector and lgus to take on and purchase these vaccines without the tripartite agreement it will not happen Yesterday, the government, together with the private sector, secured 17 million doses from AstraZeneca through a tripartite agreement. 50% of the supply will be donated to the national government, while the other half will be for the employees of the private sector. Aside from AstraZeneca, vaccine czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. said they are now discussing the possible tripartite agreements with Novavax and Moderna. Private firms as well as the LGUs will still have to adhere with the prioritization of the Department of Health in the inoculation starting with frontliners and those who belong to the vulnerable sector. It was said to us by AstraZeneca under the privileged access that our families cannot be part of it. Yung mga may-ari hindi pwede. Yung mga executives namin hindi pwede. Yung pwede lang dito yung mga frontliners, merchandisers, security guards, lahat yan. Hmm. However, Senator Cynthia Villar wants the companies to decide on their, on their own in distributing the vaccines to their employees. So, dapat bigyan na ng right yung mga companies to buy directly. Kasi pag ganito, pakikialam pa rin ng DOH kung sino bibigyan ng kumpanya. 
Hindi mo naman pwede sabihin na tindera mo lang ang bibigyan mo, hindi mo bibigyan yung mga manager mo. Without the managers, who will manage the tindera? And who will manage the housing? This is impractical. According to Secretary Galvez, it is included in the agreement the equitable access of the vaccines and that vaccine manufacturers are also bound to follow the prioritization guidelines set by the World Health Organization. The vaccine czar further explained that once the vaccines arrived in the country, the Department of Health will receive the vaccines first for logistical reasons. It will then undergo a 15-day inspection to ensure the ordered supply. The vaccine supply that were procured by local government units will be given to them in full. Yung doses na binila para sa kanilang constituent will be given to them. And even the government will add it up, the procurement of the government, so that we can have some sort of 70% herd immunity for, for the certain geographical area. Senate President Pro Tempore Ralph Recto believes the LGUs and the private sector have seen the supposed slow action of the government in the procurement of the vaccines. Based on the computation provided by Senator Panfilo Lacson, 75 million doses of vaccines have been secured by this initiative at no cost to the government. 44 million doses will be given by COVAX facility for free, 14 million doses from those secured by the LGUs and 17 million doses from the private sector. According to Senator Lacson, this will be able to vaccinate 37.5 million out of the 70 million Filipinos that the government target to inoculate this year. It will leave the government with 32 million Filipinos from its target this 2021. However, officials say all of this will depend on the stability of global supply and the prices of vaccines. So, sa pa yung budget natin na 82.5. That is the point. Sobra pa. The reason why the private sector went in and the LGU went in is because tingin nila ng national government mabagal masyado. Senate Majority Leader Miguel Zubiri made a motion to conduct an executive session with the officials of Task Force Against COVID-19 to know other details on the procurement such as the prices of the vaccines. With a lot of hesitations on the efficacy of vaccines in the market, Vaccine Czar and National Task Force Against COVID-19 Chief Implementer Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. assures that the COVID-19 vaccines to be purchased by the country are those which will get the nod of our vaccine experts panel. But without their approval, the government can still cancel its vaccine purchase. Rosalie Cons explains why. The Philippines is negotiating with seven vaccine manufacturers for the supply of safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines in the country. This year, the country targets to have 148 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines. This include vaccines produced by Serum Institute of India, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Janssen, Moderna, Sinovac Biotech, and Gamaleya Research Institute. Two of these have already signed term sheet or supply agreements with the Philippines. Vaccine czar Carlito Galvez assures no vaccine will be purchased without the vaccine experts' endorsement. Only those vaccines endorsed by the vaccine experts panel will be purchased. And number two, only those issued an EUA by the FDA will be administered. The Duterte administration said the negotiation of the government with any vaccine manufacturers can still be cancelled upon the recommendation of the vaccine experts panel. The government deal with China's Sinovac is also not a done deal. Can, can, they, can the resource person just answer who pwede pa bang hindi natin bilhin yung Sinovac? Yun lang naman po yung tanong po si Senate President. Ma'am, the answer, the answer to that is yes. Uh, if the vaccine expert panel does not recommend uh, the, a certain vaccine, then uh, the Philippine government uh, this we will not purchase and uh, and will not administer the vaccine. Okay. Um, so are, to, the to the wrap... choice of vaccine is heavily reliant on what the vaccine expert panel recommends. 
The Department of Finance also assured during the Senate hearing that although Sinovac Biotech has already committed to sell and deliver 50,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines before February ends, the Philippines has no obligation to buy those if Sinovac fails to comply with the regulatory process of the Food and Drug Administration or FDA. Meanwhile, aside from the target of the 148 million doses of vaccine, the Philippines is also eyeing 44 million doses from the COVAX facility. The doses will be given free to the Philippines according to the WHO. The Philippines is in advanced stages of negotiation with Pfizer on vaccine supply agreement. The term sheet can be signed between Pfizer and the government next week. Pfizer assured the Philippines of its vaccine supply. Pfizer is very keen to partner with the Philippines and ensure that the Pfizer and Biotech COVID-19 vaccine is available for use in the country. Recently, the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, approved the emergency use authorization of Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines. In February, two vaccine supplies are expected to arrive in the country, the 50,000 doses of Sinovac vaccine and Pfizer vaccines through the COVAX facility. The rollout of the first dosage of vaccine will likely be on the second quarter of the year, while the bulk of vaccine supplies are expected to arrive in the third and fourth quarter of 2021. On the other hand, the Cold Chain Association of the Philippines revealed that the government has not coordinated with them on COVID-19 vaccine storage. Some vaccines need to be stored at minus 7 degrees Celsius. Hindi pa po nakikipag-usap sa amin ang gobyerno. Uh, kaya po, uh, hindi rin namin masimula ng paggawa ng plano, ng action plans na aming maaaring kailanganin ilag- i- ipatupad dahil hanggang ngayon po wala kaming naririnig na uh, malinaw na direksyon. Handa pa rin po kami namang tumulong. Kailangan lamang po namin malaman kung kami kasali o hindi. But according to Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, they have directly coordinated with cold chain storage providers who have pharmaceutical-grade cold chain facilities. Duque further expressed willingness to coordinate with the Cold Chain Association of the Philippines for their recommendations. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Even without a sight of a vaccine, the Marikina City government is conducting immunization training programs to inoculate its target of 60 percent or 270,000 of its residents against the coronavirus disease. Ray Palayo explains why. The Marikina City government is in talks with two pharmaceutical companies for its tripartite procurement of COVID-19 vaccines. Mayor Marcelino Teodoro said they are targeting to inoculate around 270,000 of its residents, equivalent to 60% of its total population. A funding of 87 million pesos has been allocated for the procurement of the vaccines that is expected to arrive in February or in the first quarter of the year. Mayor Teodoro lists who are the individuals who will first receive the vaccines. The priority region is primarily one healthcare workers, yan, mga social workers, yung mga non-medical, yung nasa yung PNP natin, yung mga ganang barangay health workers, uh, yung nasa essential workers natin na nakatulong natin, the senior citizen, PWDs, yung mga mahihirap, yung mga mga nakatira doon sa mga settlement area ng Marikina, tapos yung mga working population namin. The mayor is also expecting an allocation of vaccines from the national government. The Marikina City's vaccine storage is ready to accommodate up to 40,000 vials. But they are also preparing other rooms to store more vaccine. We expand pa rin namin to para at least makapag-hold kami ng up to 100,000 vials ng ano, ng uh, vaccine. Both 2 to 8 degrees and sub-zero cold storage check The existing vaccine storage is fully air-conditioned and has vaccine refrigerators. They also have a carrier to transport its vaccines from different vaccination sites. They also have a special ice container and thermometer to maintain the right temperature of vaccines. An auto-disabled syringe will also be used. This is to assure that the syringe will not be reused. 
Ito kasi once na inaspirate mo na hanggang dito, 0.5, ayun na, may ano siya. Yan. Pag nag-ano na siya sa 0.5, tapos i-inject mo na siya, di ba? Pag in-inject mo na siya, naubos na ano, hindi mo na siya uli ma-ano, mahahatak to at pababa uli. Meanwhile, even without a site of vaccine, the Marikina City government is now training individuals who will conduct the vaccination in the city. Profilers are also on training to assure that the recipient of the vaccine qualifies to receive it. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. And to urge more Filipinos to get vaccinated, the government will issue vaccine passports to Filipinos who will be inoculated against the coronavirus disease. Aiko Miguel will give us the details in this report live. Yes, uh, Aiko, good evening. Yes, William, good evening. In a media briefing this morning, Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Verger said that the vaccine passport will be in the form of a card with a QR, QR code that would identify which vaccines the patient took. Undersecretary Verger said the vaccine passport would be used in entry points such, such as the airports and could form part of the Philippine health protocols. Here is Undersecretary Maria Rosario Verger. This would be something of a unique identifier for specific uh, p uh, persons that will receive the vaccine. And dito, magkakaroon din po sila ng card na magsasabi na sila ay nabakunahan either with one dose or two doses. And this will serve as their certificate that they had been vaccinated. The Department of Health will also establish, together with the Department of Information and Communications Technology, a data registry where all vaccinated individuals will be listed. Food and Drug Administration Director General Eric Domingo said in the program Get It Straight with Daniel Razon this morning that an individual cannot choose which COVID-19 vaccines can be brought in their area. This is because an area should have a pharma-grade warehouse or storage facility to assure no COVID-19 vaccine will be spoiled or put to waste. This means they would need to have a facility that can store COVID-19 vaccines with their required storage temperature. Accurate po ba yung nadidinig ko na kung ako ang sasaksakan, ay hindi ako pwedeng pumili kung anong brand yung isasaksak sa akin? Well, hindi ko pa po nakita yung final guidelines na ilalabas po ng DOH at saka ng NPF dyan. Pero I would think po na sa isang lugar, alimbawa pupunta sa eh, oh, isang probinsya o isang isla, siguro po isang bakuna lang ang papadala nila doon. Ano? Kasi masyado po rin magulo kung tatlo o apat na bakuna sa isang lugar. So I think uh, yan po talaga ang magiging uh, kalakaran ano? na i-decide kung aling bakuna ang pwede kung saan lugar. Pagkatapos po, kung anong mapupunta naman doon, probably po talaga isang klase lamang ang gagamitin sa bawat ano, each uh, geographic area. Will FDA uh, Director General Domingo says Pfizer-BioNTech will have to be stored to minus 70 degrees Celsius temperature, which is as cold as Antarctica, while Moderna vaccine can be stored to minus 20 degrees Celsius, which is as cold as a regular freezer. The DOH also explained that the efficacy rate of a vaccine is not a basis for its distribution. Like for example, uh, those requiring the ultra-low storage uh, freezers, ito po talaga ay hindi natin mailalagay sa mga far-flung areas. Kaya kasama na po sa strategia ng ating gobyerno, Well, the DOH and FDA reiterates that the vaccination program is not mandatory. A person should sign an informed consent if he or she will proceed with a COVID-19 vaccine inoculation. And that is the latest live. Back to you, Will. Yes, uh, thank you, Aiko Miguel, our health correspondent reporting live. The Department of Health clarified that they do not recommend the use of two different brands of COVID-19 vaccine to complete the two doses needed. Mirasol Abogadil will tell us why. Health experts shed some light on questions frequently asked by the public about the vaccination process against COVID-19. One of these is the concern about inoculating a person with two different brands of vaccine. 
According to Dr. Lulu Bravo, the chairperson of the Philippine Medical Association's Ad Hoc Committee on Vaccination, they do not recommend that a person already inoculated with a certain brand of vaccine be vaccinated with a different brand to complete the two doses. This is not recommended. Interchangeability, that is what we call it, is actually a no-no because no company will be willing to do a study on that kind of a process. Should this happen, she said that two doses of the vaccine last given to a person should be completed. Should this occur when a vaccine has been used previously and then you use another one, what happens is um, it could be recommended that you finish off with another second dose of that second vaccine that you use in order to complete the two doses of that second vaccine that you use. But the Department of Health warned against the danger of interchangeability. You would not want to uh, toy with the idea of giving different vaccines for the simple reason that if an adverse event following immunization uh, does happen or an adverse event of special interest, we are going to struggle to identify which of these two different vaccines must have caused it. The experts also reiterated that the vaccination program will not cover those who are 18 years old and below. Currently, there are no use of this vaccine in pediatric populations. So, dahil po, ganun po ang ating status ngayon, hindi roll out doon sa children and particularly even below 18 kasi hindi pa po sapat yung datos. And over the next uh, two years, probably, we will be in a better position to say whether the vaccines are safer, safe enough for children under 16 years. Uh, so it will, we have to take it in a safe manner. Meanwhile, Dr. Bravo clarified that vaccines with 50% efficacy are acceptable based on the World Health Organization's guidelines. But how the vaccine's efficacy works should still be considered. Efficacy has a range. In fact, it's not just one because, uh, for example, in the Pfizer's uh, 94 percent efficacy, it means that uh, severe infection on severe uh, illness is prevented 94 to even 100 percent, but that we still do not know in so far as how much transmissibility efficacy is there. Because in the clinical trial, Dr. Bravo also emphasized that it's still better to get vaccinated than wait for the medicine against COVID-19. We have always this old adage that prevention is better than cure and that for vaccines, it is an investment in health. A superior doctor prevents disease, an inferior doctor treats disease. And this is held up by health economics. She added that the Philippines has a lot of vaccine specialists respected in the global community for their dedication and expertise and that the public can trust that they will not be given ineffective vaccines. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Health reported more than 2,000 new COVID-19 cases in the country Friday. The country recorded 2,048 new infections, increasing the overall tally to 496,646. The DOH said that 5.4% or 27,033 of the total case count are active cases. 137 more people died due to the viral disease, bringing the death toll to 9,876. The nationwide recovery tally increased to 459,737 with 551 new survivors. Bulacan has the most number of new cases with 98, Davao City 89, Pangasinan 84, Manila 80, and Leyte 73. The DOH said it is monitoring the situation in Davao City. And for those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. 
The Philippines now includes the United Arab Emirates and Hungary in its travel ban due to the new COVID-19 variant. Rosalie Kos will tell us why. The Interagency Task Force Against COVID-19 approved the recommendation to extend the travel restrictions of foreign travelers from more than 30 countries starting today until the end of January to prevent the spread of new COVID-19 variant. This is based on IATF Resolution No. 94. Inaprobahan po ng inyong IATF ang rekomendasyon na ma-extend hanggang January 31, 2021 ang entry travel restrictions at mga patakaran sa mga biyaherong galing o transiting sa mga sumusunod na mga bansa kung saan meron na pong bagong strain ng COVID-19. The government has also included the United Arab Emirates or UAE and Hungary in the list of countries covered by the Philippine travel restrictions. Foreign passengers coming from these countries are prohibited from entering the country effective on January 17 to January 31, 2021. But foreign travelers arriving in the Philippines before the said period can still be allowed to enter the country but they are subject to absolute facility-based 14-day quarantine period. Filipino citizens coming from or who have been to these two countries are allowed to enter the Philippines but shall be required to undergo strict facility-based quarantine. Entry ban is imposed against foreign travelers coming from the United Kingdom, Denmark, Ireland, Japan, Australia, Israel, the Netherlands, People's Republic of China, Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, Switzerland, France, Germany, Iceland, Italy, Lebanon, Singapore, Sweden, South Korea, South Africa, Canada, Spain, United States of America, Portugal, India, Finland, Norway, Jordan, Brazil, Australia, Jamaica, Luxembourg, and Oman until January 31, 2021. The IATF directed the Department of Transportation to strictly implement issuances against airlines that will allow the boarding of passengers who are prohibited from entering the Philippines. Also, contact tracing protocols and quarantine protocols will be strictly implemented. Sa kabilang banda, papalakasin ng contact tracing protocols kung saan isasama ang third generation contacts para sa no new variant cases. Lahat ng matutukoy na close contacts ay kailangang uh, sumailalim sa mahigpit na facility-based sa uh, 14-day quarantine samantalang ang natirang contacts mula sa flight manifest ay papahiyuhan uh, sumunod sa appropriate um, quarantine protocols. Local government units shall prepare and strengthen the maintenance of their quarantine facilities and ensure the proper enforcement of the StaySafe.ph system for ease of contact tracing. IATF has also approved the weekly genomic biosurveillance activities of the Department of Health, UP Philippine Genome Center, and UP National Institutes of Health. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration, or OWA, assures that designated quarantine hotels are still capable to accommodate returning overseas Filipino workers who are required to undergo the 14-day mandatory quarantine. This as the Philippine government extends the imposition of travel ban in 32 countries with confirmed cases of COVID-19 UK variant. Joe Anano tells us why. Following the decision of the national government to extend the travel ban in 32 countries until January 31 due to threats of the new COVID-19 UK variant, the Overseas Workers Welfare Administration assures that designated quarantine hotels are still capable to accommodate returning OFWs who are required to submit themselves under isolation. According to OWA, there are around 1,500 up to 2,500 daily arrivals of OFWs in the Philippines. OWA Administrator Hans Leo Kaklak explains that currently there are around 6,000 OFWs from those countries covered by the travel ban that are now taking their 14-day mandatory quarantine in designated hotels. This number is apart from the 3,000 OFWs who are also under quarantine but are from countries that are not covered by the travel ban. So, mga siyam na libo ngayon, mga OFW sa hotel sa asin. Pakayanin naman, so far, uh, managed naman ito between uh, OWA, Coast Guard, saka ng Bureau of Quarantine, yung pananatili ng OFW sa asin ito. Administrator Katdag says that as of now, quarantine hotels can still accommodate incoming OFWs since some of them has been discharged after they completed their isolation period. 
although the government has yet to include the United Arab Emirates in the travel ban. OWA estimates that an additional 1,000 OFWs will be added in the daily arrivals and their hotel accommodation will be a huge challenge for OWA. Medyo malaking uh, madadagdag pero kakayanin naman ito. Meron kaming usapan doon sa technical working group ng IATF ng isang araw na may two week na pagmamanman ng sitwasyon. So hopefully after the two week period, nakapagsigi ulit tayo ng assessment. Apart from UAE, OWA says that it would be critical for our quarantine capacity if Saudi Arabia will be included in the travel ban since it is the top country with the most number of OFWs. The Department of Foreign Affairs earlier advised returning OFWs to postpone their travel back here in the Philippines so as not to cause inconvenience and burden with the implementation of these travel restrictions to prevent further entry of the COVID-19 UK variant. Joan Nano, UMTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of the Interior, Interior and Local Government, or DILG, said it has granted a one-week extension on the deadline for the road clearing operations following requests by local government units or LGUs to give them more time to clear roads of obstructions. The DILG said that instead of January 15, LGUs have been given until January 22 to complete their road clearing efforts. The DILG announced in November last year the resumption of nationwide road clearing operations, giving LGU 60 days to comply with President Rodrigo Duterte's directive to rid the streets of illegal obstructions. The validation period will be on January, January 25 to February 5. The Manila Electric Company, or Meralco, says it has given its customers ample time to pay their unsettled utility bills during the ECQ period. But with accumulating bills, customers are now worrying their electricity lines might be disconnected. Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why. The Manila Electric Company has already started sending out disconnection notices to their customers, consuming 201 kilowatt hour per month or more with electric bills that are due this month. While customers consuming 200 kilowatt hour per month or less are concerned how they will be able to pay their bills. Like Haji Magante of Quezon City, who has his family's Meralco bills accumulated to over 10,000 pesos, but he only had his job back under skeleton force. Kaya yung sinasakod, kumbaga binabudget na lang. Sinecure muna namin yung sa bahay para ano, mabayarin sa bahay sa pagkain ng mga bata. Jovelin Relimbo also encounters the same concern with more than 20,000 pesos electric bills incurred in the last 10 months. And when she went to the Morocco Business Center in her area, she was given an option to apply for an installment scheme for three months just by submitting an agreement letter. So, tumotal siya ng 20,106. So, ang sabi nung nakausap ko sa customer service, need kong bayaran dito sa 13,790 yung 6,000. Then, kailangan ko din magsettle dito sa ECQ bills ko ng dalawang buwan para ma-approve daw yung sa agreement. Meralco explains that customers having difficulty in paying their bills may opt to go to the business center so they may find ways on how to help them with their payment. Yung mga customers po na nagpupunta po sa aming opisina, lahat po ay ina-accommodate po namin yung kanilang mga concerns. Uh, regarding po sa extension of payment, ina-accommodate po namin sila. Uh, may kaya or wala, wala po kaming, uh, wala po kaming pinipili po ron. Meralco is still studying Senator Risa Antivero's suggestion to extend the installment scheme in paying customers' bills. But Meralco spokesperson Joe Zaldariaga emphasized that they have already given ample time to their customers and it is important to collect the revenues to keep their operation. We already uh, given yung ample time. One year na, ang, uh, almost one year na, pagmula nung we stopped uh, disconnecting since March. And uh, although pinag-aalalan pa rin naman natin, and on a case-to-case -case basis, Ay, uh, para yung mga customers. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. 
Philippine National Police Chief Debold Sinas wants stiff criminal, criminal and administrative penalties against the four cops who were arrested during a raid at a clandestine Shabu laboratory inside the Subic Bay Freeport. Leia Ilagan reports why. A drug suspect considered as a high-value target was arrested along with his four police cohorts in a by operation at a suspected clandestine laboratory of crystal methamphetamine or shabu was being operated in Subic Bay Freeport soon, part of Olongapu City shortly after Friday midnight. The PNP identified the suspects as Jericho Dabu, a civilian, Police Lieutenant Reynato Basa Jr., and Police Corporals Gino de la Cruz, Edisir Alipio, and Geoffrey Parentela. The cops are all assigned at the Drug Enforcement Unit of the Olongapo City Police Station 2. At least 300 grams of suspected shabu were confiscated, along with equipment used to manufacture drugs. An irate Philippine National Police Chief, Police General de Bolsinas wants stiffest criminal and administrative penalties against the four cops. Sina says these people do not deserve to be associated with the PNP. Sinas has instructed the DIDM to closely supervise the filing of criminal charges against the four policemen. Sila po ay nadisamahan. Sila po ay pinigyan uh, na ng traction. Ito po mga nag to facilitate conduct of investigation that will lead to the dismissal of these police officers along with the fight of criminal action against them. Osana adds a random drug test will be conducted on the members of the Olongapo City Police, particularly on its drug enforcement units, to determine if there are more policemen involved in illegal drug activities. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Days after their release in police custody, the court now wants the nine former policemen involved in the killing of four Army Intel operatives in Sulu back in detention. Dante Amento tells us why. The Regional Trial Court in Holo, Sulu has issued arrest warrants against nine dismissed policemen who were charged for killing of the four Army Intelligence officers last year. DOJ prosecutors filed the criminal cases against the nine cops last January 4, 2021. State prosecutors have earlier found probable cause to charge the nine dismissed police officers, Senior Master Sergeant Abdel Simar Pachiri, Master Sergeant Hani Badiri, Staff Sergeant Iskandar Susulan, Staff Sergeant Ernie Sarsapal, Corporal Sulki Andaki, Patrolman Monor Pasani, Staff Sergeant Almudzrin Hajarudin, Patrolman Alkajal Mandangan, and Patrolman Rajib Butalan for four counts of murder and planting of evidence. Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara said the court also granted the DOJ's urgent motion for hold departure order to prevent the accused from fleeing the country. The accused were released from the PNP custody after their dismissal from service. Philippine National Police Spokesperson Brigadier General Elder Brandi Usana said he is hoping that the accused would surrender immediately to authorities. Usana added that PNP Chief General Debold Sinas has ordered the monitoring of the movement of these former police officers. Meanwhile, Armed Forces of the Philippines Spokesperson Marine Major General Edgar Arevalo said the military welcomes this development. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. At least 34 people have been killed and hundreds were injured after a strong earthquake struck and toppled buildings in Indonesia's Sulawesi Island in the early hours. Sharis Longbowen will give us the details live. Sharis? Yes, Diego. A 6.2 magnitude earthquake has triggered landslides in the island of Sulawesi, Indonesia, earlier this morning at around 1.28 a.m., forcing residents to flee their homes and move to safer place. According to the Bureau of Meteorology, Climatology, and 
Geophysics Agency or BMKG, the earthquake has destroyed several buildings, an estimated 62 residential homes, and brought hundreds of people to injury and claimed the lives of at least 34 people. But authorities are saying that these numbers could still rise as more people are buried under collapsed buildings. Rescuers are still searching for more patients and hospital staff said to be trapped under the Mamuju Hospital. According to the chief of BMKG Earthquake and Tsunami Center, Bambang City of Reitno, the 6.2 magnitude was still connected with a 5.9 magnitude earthquake felt on Thursday afternoon. Authorities have warned that strong aftershocks could follow the two main quakes and that they could still trigger a tsunami. Meanwhile, the Philippine Embassy in Indonesia has not made any official statement yet if there are casualties involving Filipino citizens. Indonesia sits on the Pacific Ring of Fire, holding some 40% of the world's geothermal reserves. The last deadliest earthquake that has hit Sulawesi was in September 28, 2018, when a 7.4 magnitude hit the island followed by a tsunami, which claimed 2,102 lives injured 4,612 people, and left 680 people missing. Diego? Thank you, Sharice Longbowen, reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. And uh, for the news abroad, here's Maria Latosa, reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening, William. After more than eight months of zero COVID-related deaths, a woman from Hebei Province mainland China breaks the streak. Early Briones will tell us the details live. Yes, Early, please go ahead. Yes, Maria. An elderly woman from the province of Hebei, China was reported to have been a very severe case as she was very ill already with multiple existing comorbidities affecting her health. The National Health Commission has recorded her death and is the first addition to the overall death toll since May 2020, now totaling to 4,365 deaths in mainland China. A total of 81 new COVID cases were reported from Wednesday, giving a total of 463 cases within Hebei. The province is just outside of Beijing and has recently been suffering from a resurgence and a rapid spread of outbreaks. Within two weeks, parts of the province have already been put in lockdown to stop the spread, along with millions of citizens locked down in other neighboring areas as number keeps on going up. At the same time, the Chinese government remains vigilant as the ongoing topic of coronavirus, apparently originating from China and more specifically in Wuhan, continues to persist throughout the media. As of Thursday, an international team of experts from the World Health Organization, together with Chinese scientists, arrived in Wuhan to study the possible origins of the virus. The long-awaited investigation of how the virus emerged comes after one year past its due date, with plenty of political debates and international uprising. On this note, WHO representatives are hopeful to look for the answers that might shed light in a healthier future for all of us. Marielle? All right, thank you, Early, for that report. Severe oxygen shortages at hospitals in Brazil's Amazon forces mass patient transfer to deal with the onslaught of a second wave and a new COVID-19 variant. Marvi Delfin will give us the details live. Yes, Marvi, good evening. Muriel, the government of Brazil's Amazonas has decided to fly 235 non-intensive care COVID-19 patients out of the state as the health system in the city of Manaus collapses amid a dwindling supply of oxygen tanks. Manaus, a city of 2 million people, which has the only ICU beds available in the vast state of Amazonas, is still trying to recover from the first wave of the pandemic. In the first peak of the crisis, Manaus consumed 30,000 cubic meters of oxygen per day, and that has more than doubled to nearly 70,000 cubic meters, according to White Martins, the multinational company that provides oxygen to Manaus's public hospitals. Amazonas Governor Wilson Lima called on the federal government and authorities from other states to help reinforce their dwindling stock of oxygen tanks needed to keep COVID-19 patients breathing 
breathing as some people were starting to die breathless at home. Videos of distraught relatives of COVID-19 patients asking netizens to buy oxygen for them has flooded social media sites. Along with many other governors and mayors elsewhere in Brazil who offered their help, Vice President Hamilton Moriao said on Twitter that the country's air force had taken more than eight tons of hospital resources, including oxygen cylinders, beds, and tents to Manaus. While Brazil's Health Minister Eduardo Pazuello visited the Amazon estate earlier this week to try to help ease the crisis and yesterday, he said Manaus would be first in line to get vaccines. Amazonas has recorded more than 220,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases and 5,930 deaths, and the pace of virus transmission is expected to increase more rapidly as researchers recently identified a new circulating variant of the virus in travelers coming from the Amazon. In response, Governor Lima has decreed more restrictions, including suspension of public transportation and establishing a curfew between 7 p.m. and 6 a.m. Protesters carried Brazilian flags through the streets, and Governor Lima faced criticism from supporters of the conservative president for imposing new measures aimed at stemming the virus's surge. Despite Brazil being the third most infected by COVID-19 globally, President Bolsonaro has downplayed risk of the disease, saying the economic fallout of the pandemic will kill more than the virus. Back to you, Mariel. Thank you, Marvi, for that live report. Meanwhile, a stunning discovery of a tree-shaped lake in New South Wales, Australia was made catching viewers' attention across the globe and bringing recognition to nature's creations. Nina Bascon will tell us why. A very captivating discovery was made by photographer Derek Maroney at Kakura Lake, two hours south of Byron Bay, New South Wales, Australia. Captured with his drone, Maroney's footage reveals the emergence of ridges in the lake due to the tea tree oil layer which sits above the current, forming a shape which has been dubbed the Tree of Life. Moroni himself was totally shocked by the outcome of his images, and likewise, others too who witnessed these shots were in awe, bringing fame and recognition to Moroni's name and residence, Broom's Head NSW. As Moroni reviewed these images, he was stunned with what he captured, stating it was unfortunate that what Mother Nature created was not able to be seen by many people. The natural oils move to the waters as the lake's connection to the beach and estuary are covered in tea tree leaves. When the lake becomes full due to a storm, the tides from the beach then push the water and oil back into the lake. When the storm does pass, the water moves back into the beach while the tea tree oil remains in the ridges of the lake. Moroni states that this fascination would not be recognized by many standing on land, as the only way to view it would be from an almost bird's eye point of view, which is achievable on a plane or with a drone like Moroni's. Nina Bascon, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And uh, those are the reasons behind the news here in Australia and in other parts of the globe. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. Back to you, William. Thank you, Maria Latosa, live from Perth, Australia. Those are the reasons behind the news, January 15, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I'm Angelo Castro III. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. <laughs>